Here's a fan theory. The stormtroopers let the rebels get away. This episode of Idea Channel is brought to you by Dropbox. So we need to talk about Stormtroopers, which sort of requires that you know the basic goings on of the Star Wars movies. If you're already an expert, you can click here to skip ahead, but for the handful of you who have somehow managed to not see any Star Wars before now, what follows is a quick primer, a very quick primer, a ludicrously quick primer. Okay, not that ludicrous. Here we go though. The Galactic Empire is bad, they're making a big weapon, it's called the Death Star. The Rebels are good, they want to blow up the Death Star. Rural nobody Luke Skywalker becomes a Rebel, discovers he has space powers. Han Solo and Princess Leia are also Rebels. Darth Vader is basically the Empire's very talented jet black junkyard bulldog, also with space powers. And a mask. Also, he's Luke's father. Luke and the Rebels blow up the Death Star. No! We're almost done. Before the Empire, which remember is bad, there was the Republic, which was good. It was 25,000 years old before Chancellor Palpatine overthrew it and began the Empire. That's no small feat. You need an army to do that. There was one, the Clone Army. It was huge and made of, yes, clones. At first, the Clone Army was good. Then the Empire caused it to betray the Republic, so they became bad. The Empire won the Clone Wars. The clones became their military force, and that's what stormtroopers are. The Empire's hyper-trained human clone army refashioned from the clone trooper ranks that betrayed the Republic. Boom! Or I guess... So, here is what's confusing and the subject of much fan speculation. In episode four, we have rebels Han, Luke, and Leia on the Death Star. They're trying to escape. They're running around, being shot at by stormtroopers, who we now know, one, carry out the will of the Supreme Commander, and who, two, are incredibly talented fighters because they have been genetically designed for combat. How is it then that they can't seem to hit the side of a barn with their blaster rifles? Now, there are a lot of reasons as to why this might be. The cloning process for the stormtroopers changed a couple times, and so maybe these clones have some defects is maybe the least sensitive way to put it. There was also a theory going around that all of their blasters are just broken, just defective. Bad sights, crooked, shooty parts. Whatever about a blaster that could possibly be broken, let's just say that it is. This was a bad batch. These explanations I think are fine, but also circumstantial and a little boring. One other compelling theory is that as cloned to all heck as these troopers are, there is, nay, must still be something human about them. Star Wars canon establishes that throughout the Clone Wars, before the great attrition began, Jedi commanders were able to foster certain clone officers to the degree where they developed some kind of individuality, some personality and humanity. This, for the most part, was considered desirable because it helped them think tactically, but maybe there were some other side effects as well. Carl Smallwood on Cracked.com wrote in 2010 that he thought maybe after having fought battle after battle against other armor-clad, helmet-wearing clones, droids, legions of aliens, and all manner of beings so easily dismissed as other because of their appearance that upon being ordered to shoot at humans without masks, without armor or scales, with new hope in their eyes, the troopers just can't some deep and inescapable part of them resists. According to a Frontline PBS report, in World War I, quote, only 15% of riflemen would fire their weapon at an exposed enemy soldier. Is it so hard to believe that a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away where people regularly interact with alien life, where there is so much war and hostility and destabilization that clones with even an ounce of humanity would heed a natural resistance to killing their own? Makes sense to me. So they take the shot because it has to at least look like they're trying to do their job, but they're such good marksmen, they miss perfectly every time. But okay, maybe you're not a Moss Eisley Cantina novelty souvenir mug half full kind of person and don't believe in the fundamental inability or at least unwillingness of people to hurt their own. That's fine, I suppose. I hope therapy's going well. A counter theory is that the stormtroopers were in fact ordered not to shoot. The most meta of all of these theories is that these stormtroopers know that they are in a movie or are, you know, just actors. So if they kill Luke and the rebels, it's over and boring and the movie is bad. And so they have to let them get away. They're in some way under orders from George Lucas, which I mean, okay, sure, but also snore. 
A related theory states they're under orders from either Vader or the Emperor himself to let the rebels escape so that they can track them to Yavin 4 and find the secret location of the rebel base there. This makes sense and also sort of explains that one Benny Hill-esque scene where Han chases seven stormtroopers down a hallway. They can't kill him, he's the one that pilots the ship they need to track, so this nonsense happens. <laughs> This holds up and I think makes sense, but is also almost a little too tidy. I like my fan theories to have some controversy. My personal favorite theory explaining the arguably feigned incompetence of the stormtroopers is the one which states that they knew somehow, either instinctively or consciously by thinking critically, or maybe even because of their clone programming, that the rebels should win. That whatever clone directive they have, it led them to conclude even though Palpatine is the emperor in the title, he is not by right or in actuality. Or that the continued effects of serving under Jedi Masters, individuality, tactical thinking, has led them to conclude that what is in the best interests of the Empire as a federation, not a political body, the stormtroopers as a military force, or the entire galaxy is a reformation of the Republic. I like this theory because I think it can also be applied to the legions of other what TV tropes calls MOOCs. The foot soldiers from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, every henchman in every Bond film, the ranks of Cobra soldiers from G.I. Joe, and any extra who has ever had to fight Jackie Chan. Maybe they don't want to hit someone they've suddenly realized isn't so different from them. Maybe they know it's a piece of entertainment and they can't just unceremoniously off the good guy, but maybe, just maybe, they've realized that they are the bad guy, and missing a shot, taking a dive, is their own little mini-rebellion. No! What do you guys think? Why do the stormtroopers miss the rebels when they're trying to escape the Death Star? And is there a theory that generally accounts for how mooks are just all kind of bad at their job? Let us know in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding Noel Carroll's taxonomy of horror monsters. If you want to watch that, you can click right here or find a link in the doobly-doo. In case, against all odds, you somehow managed to miss it up until this point, Idea Channel now has a t-shirt, which is very exciting. And if you are going to be at TEDx Vienna this weekend, where I also will be, make sure you say hey. This week's episode was brought to you by the hard work of these battle-ready editing clones. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit links in the doobly-doo and the tweet of the week comes from MetGoog who points us towards a Verge piece about the recent decision which makes it okay for you to lead Haxor your tractor. Good news everyone, the tractors are free. Well, I mean, they still cost money, but they are not, you understand what I'm saying. And hey, in case you were wondering, this episode of Idea Channel was sponsored by Dropbox. If you're designing, presenting, writing, or building, Dropbox makes it easy to work together on any file. Because hey, if you can work with anyone, anywhere, any way you want, the world will surely be full of more interesting things. Dropbox, all yours.